Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India I am Mahesh Chandir. I am Principal Scientist at Indian Veterinary Research Institute at Ijatnagar in Uttar Pradesh. Today I will be discussing about healthcare, disease control, management and record keeping under organic livestock production. So before I talk about organic livestock production, let me share with you the Indian livestock scenario. How it is? How does it look like? High in number, low in productivity. We have huge livestock population in India. And but productivity of our livestock is very low and the genetic potential are most of the livestock breeds in India are very low and the, they are poorly fed. If you look at the feeding, we, they are not being fed as per their requirement. Improper housing, if you go to rural areas, so they, they are kept in a very poor condition. So sometimes there is no proper shelter and housing is very uh, sometime inside dark and there is this very moist and all a very precarious condition we see that how livestock are kept in most of the houses or in the villages. Weak disease prevention and control infrastructure. So there, there are several diseases still which exist in India like foot and mouth disease which exists in India and affects a lot of animals. Likewise there are several other diseases. So control mechanism we need to do a lot to improve livestock disease control mechanism in this country. Poorly developed livestock value chain, we are producing the livestock products, but the processing facilities are so poor. So we, we end up producing the raw milk for example, we are not able to make many valuable livestock products and raw, we end up only selling raw milk only. So value chain basis and that value chain development is still the requirement in the country. Lack of processing value addition and marketing infrastructure. So marketing often, say for example, we collect milk from the small households and then a half a liter, one liter and all, we collect it. Now thankfully now there is dairy cooperative mechanism is there in several states, but still there is processing value addition and marketing infrastructure is very weak as far as livestock products are concerned. So but one good advantage about the livestock is that Indian breeds are hardy. They sustain on resource scarce domains. Mostly you might have seen in rural areas, they are not able to, farmers are not able to feed them greens, uh, maybe, maybe uh, this fodder, fodder, green fodder. So they are li uh, living on crop residues, stubbles, wheat uh, and then afterwards the straw of the rice, paddy straw. So they are, they are being fed and then but they can sustain well. If you want to have improved cattle breeds, exotic breeds and then we cannot, they will not do well under this scarce resource scarce regime where the uh, green fodder is not there, barren ration feeding is not there. So the poorly fed animal we cannot expect much from such feeding uh, of animals. Now coming to organic again, organic uh, uh, animal husbandry. The first requirement is livestock identification record keeping. So once we have decided to convert to organic animal husbandry from the conventional organic animal, uh, conventional animal husbandry, so we have to follow the livestock standard, organic livestock certification standards. So these certification standards, what are these certification standards? That it has been for breeding, feeding, management, disease control, for every aspect standard has been elaborated how we have to do livestock production under organic management. It has been elaborated under the guidelines developed under national program on organic production. So the livestock identification, each animal herd, batch, flock, say poultry flock should be bear unique identification number. So with ear tax sometime you see in the ears of animals. So when we go for livestock insurance and all this, so when we take bank loan and all ear tax are given, but the this ear tax and organic system, any animal should be properly documented and its information should be available. So without uh, identification number, this we cannot say that it is organic production. This is one of the requir uh, requirement. 
So, the all individual number, so all individual livestock, they should be num given the some kind of a identification number. So, that it can, it is a uh, progress of this animal, it is a various information related to that animal, anybody can anytime access through this tag number. So, why, why it is so important? Because if you have given any kind of a treatment to animal or what kind of feed we have, we are giving it to. So, it is a date of birth and date of whatsoever different, Let's say if animal has given birth to a, a calf. So, it is, it is to be recorded. So, th then, then it is uh, what I would say that in the conventional animal husbandry. So, tagging of animal is important there too, but nobody will question it there why it is not there, unless you have gone for livestock insurance. But in case of organic animal husbandry, so nobody will recognize it, because it is subject to audit. Any organ, organic production facility, maybe it is crops or animal production, it is subject to audit by the certification agency. They audit it and by also it is subject to audit by the government agency, they will verify that the production is organic. So, it follows the standards. So, we begin with the livestock number and then identification number. Then we have to keep records. So, records very important because certification, because as I told organic production is subject to inspection. It is because the inspectors will certify that yes, it has been this, these steps have been followed by the farmer and then this is as per the norms of the and the guidelines of the organic production. So, that for that, so record, so record keeping is very important. You have to have different registers and noting down and the forms are there. What kind of records you have to submit, that records is available and then that record is given, it passed on to uh, APIDA where the, the, you, are, you, are, you are registered as an organic farmer, that information go to then, then to, through the traceability, to, uh, we call it trace net. So, the trace net maintain all the information related to crops. In the case of livestock, trace net is not so well developed as yet, but it is in the process of development. So, the all the information the farmer is supposed to feed, if he has a growing some crops with the date of sowing and what and the date of uh, application of bio fertilizers or and can kind of a bio pesticides. So, that information is to be maintained. In case of livestock also, we are they are supposed to farmers are supposed to maintain various data for each animal herd or batch. It should be maintained and made available to the auditors. Whenever they visit any certification, see, then it, it can be shown. So, that if you are not showing it, you will not get compliance certificate from the certification agency and you will not be able to market your product as organic product. So, what kind of information in case of livestock is to be maintained by the farmers? Parent detail. Say for example, if you are rearing a calf, it should be available information related to the parents of that calf. So, whether the bull or the mother, so mother cow. So, what was the information and what was their age, where from they were taken and all related to the related parents related information related to the parent of that calf has to be maintained in the register. Source of purchase, where from that animal was purchased. So, sometime one will think why it is needed that where from we purchase, why people bother about that. But in the traceability mechanism and for knowing that the, it was the source was not contaminated, it was good in condition, it was a healthy condition, there was no disease incidence. So, we have to take these records. So, the animals detail, when it was born, what kind of medication was given in case some uh, health requirement was there, say maybe antibiotics was supposed to be given. Of course, antibiotics are not very restricted under organic system, but in case one has given the antibiotic treatment to a particular animal or some allopathic treatment has given on the advice of the veterinarian, if it has been given, that record has to be maintained. Then, in case of antibiotic, uh, antibiotics and other allopathic medicines, some withdrawal period whether it has been followed or not, that is to be seen. Say for example, if animal uh, antibiotic has been given uh, for more than twice in a year, the animal has to be withdrawn from the organic production system. So, only two time it is permitted that too, when there is no alternative available and antibiotic has to be given, it was given and then proper withdrawal period is followed. Say for example, if antibiotic suppose X it has been given to animals for a treatment of a particular disease Y. So, it has been given. So, if it is in uh, withdrawal period, it is shown that 4 days. So, we have to withdraw that particular animal's milk, uh, say example in case of cow. So, if you are going to sell, uh, we are selling that milk as organic milk for 4 days, 
we will not be able to sell that product as organic milk because we are for we have given a treatment which is restricted under a certain condition that treatment was given and once our treatment has given for we have followed the withdrawal period say maybe 4 days maybe 48 hours it could be there so then breeding detail so how breeding how the animal was bred what are breeding whether it was a natural breeding whether it was artificial insemination so what kind of a crossing was done whether it was within the same breed whether it was the cross bred animal cross with other some other breed so we have to give the breeding detail of the animal feeding detail what has been fed to the animal so what kind of whether it has been fed crop residue whether green fodder it has been given and where from that feed came which farm it came. So, it is so normally 80 percent of the feed should come from the own farm organic farm and 20 percent conventional feed can be given initially, but the farm management plan should suggest that in, in coming next 3 4 years there the farm will be fully self sufficient with respect to feed and fodder it will be available. If it is not available organic uh, feed and fodder on farm so it will be it should be purchased from the other local uh, farms which produce organic feed and fodder. So, it is very important in the beginning 20 percent conventional feed or fodder can be given, but in due course in next 4 5 years there should be self sufficiency of the feed and fodder. So, then other detail is health care details including vaccination, medication, veterinary and prescription and withdrawal periods followed. So, as I told previously, so withdrawal period has to be followed. First of all, when we have to be in touch with a veterinarian on whose prescription we will give animal uh, this medicine to animal. So, without prescription of the veterinarian, we should not give any medicine to the, to the animal. So, prescription is very important and we have to maintain that record of the prescription. So, then and under what condition that uh, medicine was given to animal and why it was given and when uh, that medicine allopathic medicine is given or antibiotic is given only when there is no alternative available and the disease is not can be cannot be managed by other means and then and if animal is in the pain. So, if there is a acute injury is there and animal is suffering with pain, so we have to give the painkillers. So, we have to suppress the pain. We cannot say that we are organic farmer. So, we will not give any allopathic medicine to animal, we will not vaccinate animal, we will not give antibiotic that is not true. Under certain, certain uh, situations these are inevitable and we have to give these antibiotics or we have to vaccinate and what are these conditions they are already well prescribed in the document standards organic standards document produced by NPOP. So, that can be referred to under what circumstances allopathic medicines are given, antibiotics are given, vaccines are given and then on the prescription of the veterinarians. Then we have to give the production detail. So, if animal has produced 2 liters of milk, 3 liters of milk, how much milk it has produced, when it has produced, when it is stopped giving milk and all this kind of detail has to be given. Then the sale detail. So, when we are selling, how we are selling the product. So, that, that situation, how much we sold, how much is sold and that kind of a thing and other relevant detail which has been maintained, uh, which has been mentioned in the NPOP document in the annexes can be seen that these kind of a details are very important to be given. So, then labeling of organic products. So, once you have followed all the organic production guidelines and the standards uh, including the conversion period. So, if everything you have followed, you have maintain the record well as per the requirements, then you have to look for the labeling of the organic products. It should be labeled because you will you will label it and the labeling you have to give information to the consumers including name of certifier, producer and logos of India organic, Javik Bharat to build up consumer confidence because labeling gives builds up the consumers confidence because say for example, you are producing in uh, maybe in Punjab and you are selling your product in Maharashtra, in Bombay and other cities or down south. So, if you are uh, selling their product, consumer will wonder that how to believe that this product is organic or or maybe maybe how to trust it. So, that the logo will help at that time if there is a logo of the certifier then who has certified and the India organic and Javik Bharat logo is there that will that will win the con confidence of the consumers. So, all the product which are being sold in the market 
as organic products they are be, they are labeled properly labeled giving all the information about the producer and the information about the certifier's name and also it is that gives assurance to the uh, uh, that the consumer that yes it is true organic so now again coming to healthcare so basic principle of so now if you talk of animal health there is a good saying prevention is better than the cure this is strict this is very this is well suited to organic production wherein we have to take every care so that we avoid giving medicine to the animals because animal if consumes medicine allopathic medicine and all or antibiotics it is as a residue it may be it may pass down to uh, milk or its products and then when consumes such product then it will pass on to the human uh, human body and it will adversely affect. So, we have to take every care so that the preven prevention is better cure we say that it is truly applicable to organic production. So, in case of then if you are feeding well if your animal fed well as per its requirement that is one care we can take. So, before so if it has been fed well if it has been kept well means housing condition is very good it is a properly ventilated house is there there is no moisture into the the, the uh, floor of the where animal side is there so it is properly cleaned and dried up and the animal keeping conditions are very good and if you are allowing animal to walk outside in open and it is also providing grazing facility sometime so that kind of exercise is there so these these are the, these are the way we can protect our animals from various diseases. So, protection is very important because if we have taken well all these conditions right from feeding and then uh, all the breeding also and then also housing. So, then the animals these less likely to suffer from diseases or any health elements. So, that is the first condition then nutrition, sanitation and uh, corrective management practices. Sometimes management practices are so, for, so faulty that we are not keeping them and we are keeping them under the cramp condition you know the stocking density. So, we are keeping more number of animals than the space available with us. So, that crowding also affects the health of animals adversely we have to take care of that one. So, that animal is not uh, the, uh, suffering because of the less space. So, it, so this is very very important that uh, uh, we have taken care. Preventive healthcare practices as uh, uh, what I am saying that emphasizing again that preventive healthcare practices are very important in organic animal production. A farmer or any producer has to take best care so that there is no disease. So, even then sometime it happens also it also start from the selection of breed some of the breeds which are more vulnerable to diseases more susceptible. Say for example, if we are having low feed and fodder availability we should not think of a breed which can re which require a large amount of feed and fodder. So, many ag exotic large size animals they require a huge quantity of feed and fodder because they are the high yielders they give the more milk and they produce more in order to produce more they require very good quantity of feed and fodder. So, if suppose if you are not feeding an exotic breed and the cow and then large size cow which yields more and if you are feeding uh, it not well. So, it, it is likely to suffer from disease and it will its health get deteriorated because of the poor feeding and the providing adequate feed create an appropriate environment that minimize stress. So, as I told crowding if crowding is there into the cow shed, so that will cause stress and that will lead to disease and parasite administration is also very important. When so, proper disinfection has to be done so that there are no parasites often uh, ticks. So, they, they, they the ticks affect uh, the uh, animal are such vulnerable certain is breeds are more vulnerable to tick infestation. So, tick and then we have to see that environment where ticks will not uh, multiply. So, we have to reduce that incidence. So, then uh, and likewise many uh, we uh, practices we have to follow wherein we can we can have uh, proper sanitation uh, so that the and that the crowding is uh, avoided 
and then animal are uh, these farmers are supposed to follow the treatment practices in a better way. They should not at random, they should be very well qualified about how to give proper treatment to animals. So, then they have to get proper identification of disease and they should be well in consultation with the veterinarian to give his advice. So, without the prescription of the uh, veterinarian, it should not be given. And then as I told previously, preventive or prophylactic antibiotic treatment and, and the routine way it should not be given. So, only when strictly it is required and the veterinarian prescribed that only we should give antibiotics and the routine uh, cannot administer hormones for uh, other drug for growth promotion. Sometime you might have heard oxytocin is, oxytocin is frequently used by farmers, uh, some farmers in order to uh, let down of milk and all that is not a good practice. So, we have to, we have to see that because they are separating the cow from the very early ages, if cow is living with the cow, so milk let down problem is not much. So, the, there is no need for this kind of a practice resorting to such kind of practice. So, and the so, no, hormones should, hormone should not be used in order to boost the productivity or fertility. So, to induce the fertility, this is not allowed. Should give uh, proper natural medicine. So, now we follow that, we have followed the preventive practices. And then we have to look for the natural medicine, natural practices, you know, uh, Ayur veterinary Ayurvedic uh, practices are there and then farmers and local practices are there. If they are properly validated and the uh, farmer have seen that this particular practice helps the farmers and it does not in, in adversely affect the animal's health, but rather it contributes towards health and it is well proven or sometime we can say that it is well validated local farmers practices, these can be used. We have to start from that because immediately every time one cannot visit to the veterinarian. First every farmer, traditionally every Indian farmer or any other farmers, they what they do, they at their own level, they try their own medicines, where herbal treatments they give and whatever the plant decoctions they are there, they make several products for human health as well as animal health. Sometimes these products they work very well. So, we have to explore locally available material how it can be treated. Then we should look for the well uh, available Ayurvedic veterinary medicines. So, these can be tried. So, when the disease is not able to, con to control by this, then we should consult the veterinarian and then we should consult and will take advice and as suggested by him, we should give allopathic uh, treatment or antibiotic treatment we should give and then we have to follow the withdrawal period as I told previously. So, as I told the conventional or the uh, allopathic, modern allopathic medicine can be only be used. Again, I am emphasizing this thing on the advice of the qualified veterinarian. And then when antibiotics or dewormers or anti are required, we have to follow the withdrawal period. So, we, this is very important to be noted. There is no restriction that these cannot be under any case, this cannot be used. That is not the standard says. The first line of the standard organic standard says that antibiotics, hormones, uh, vaccines and all these things are having restricted use, but the, if you read the next standard which says that these can be given under certain conditions and with the following of the proper withdrawal period. So, that should be noted properly. And then as for the vaccination, sometimes people have some kind of a misinformation. They say that in the organic system only desi or local indigenous cattle are allowed. It is not true. Any kind of breed you can keep it can be local desi cattle, it can be cross breed, it can be exotic breed, any breed can be kept. So, that inf misinformation should not be there. So, every kind of breed is possible, but the, the breed which is well adapted to local condition, it does well in the organic systems. Because when a well adapted breed is kept, it is a health care requirements will be very less. It can be managed with the least resources. And then second thing is that when we have to give this treatment, so a vaccine about the vaccine, uh, vaccination I am saying, vaccination say no farmer can say that I am organic farmer, I will not vaccinate my animal. That is also not true. If the vaccination is a legal requirement, uh, the law of the land says that we have to vaccinate our animal. Right now, for example, in India, the vaccination program goes on for foot and mouth disease because this disease is endemic to India and widespread in India it happens. So, and the vaccination is the only remedy for that one. A farmer who is organic farmer cannot say that I will not 
vaccinate my animal against this disease because I am the organic farmer, that is not the correct thing. He has to get his animal vaccinated for this disease because we need to eradicate this disease from the country unless all the animals, maximum animals are vaccinated, this disease can be cannot be eliminated. For that reason, it is permitted. If a disease is endemic in some area, it routinely happens year after a year. So, we need to vaccinate that animal. So, likewise, antibiotic under certain conditions, antibiotics are a must. Say, if animal is suffering from mastitis disease. Mastitis is a disease of dairy animal. So, it suffers. So, it keeps uh, the blood start coming from the along with the milk. So, that we it need to some time it requires antibiotic treatment, some time herbal treatment and Ayurvedic treatment or even homeopathic treatment is not that effective and the farmer has to resort to the antibiotic therapy. Antibiotic therapy in that case given uh, by the when the prescription of the veterinarian. So, if you have given antibiotic treatment to an animal, you have to keep all the record of that animal that on the prescription of the veterinarian. So, this particular antibiotic was given for this many days to the farmer and for this many days withdrawal period was followed because anti, every antibiotic has certain withdrawal period. The milk of the particular animal or the product coming from this animal were not sold as organic product during this period. It should be well documented. And also this vaccine, genetically engineered vaccine should not be used. So, that is also the standard says. The species and breeds which are well adapted to a local environment, they suffer less with the diseases. That is why these with the species and breeds of animals are well preferred under organic systems. That should be noted. And again I am saying there is no restriction in cross breeds or exotic breeds or any kind of animal can be maintained under organic systems. But the local and local breeds and species are there which are well adapted to local conditions. They do well under organic system. They should be followed. Again, I am saying prevention is better than cure applies well to organic system. We have to take all care that animal does not suffer from the disease and we know it very well that how we can prevent disease. In case of human being, we are taking caution. Say for example, we are not consuming certain things and we are avoiding certain things at certain uh, duration. So, in, and we are consuming some fruit products in order to make ourselves healthier. Same is true in case of animals also. We have to and then our housing condition say for example, if you are not airy, airy well ventilated house and all these things and if you are staying in a very unsanitized environment, we are likely to suffer from diseases. So, in order to avoid these diseases affects us, we take care. So, that is true in case of animals also. Animals should be kept well. Under very good condition, they should be kept. So, then once we have kept them in very good condition, they will suffer less with the health problems. So, our health maintenance cost will be reduced if you are following them. Then second thing we should say that we are, we should be able to manage health issues with minimum allopathic drugs anti and antibiotics. That is the key that we should not use, we should not need application of the antibiotics or allopathic drugs. So, that will happen only when we have taken good care of the preventive management. Housing practices, feeding practices are there and managemental practices are if they are followed very well, then we do not need much of the allopathic drugs and antibiotics. And then we should find out the practical way of the controlling the parasites. Say for example, ticks. If ticks are affecting animals, a tick infestation is there. Sometime you, rather than using expensive chemical these uh, medicines or uh, dewormers or the parasite control uh, chemicals, uh, these medicines. So, we, we should, you, we can use our local methods. Sometime you know, so sometime people are applying salt on the skin of the animals. So, just and or some tobacco concoction is applied on the skin. So, that the, this and the sometime by mechanical way ticks are removed and the mechanical way ticks are removed and when you are using this uh, unsanitized houses, these ticks remain there in that house and they again reinfest the animal. So, we have to take care that by mechanical means by the local uh, proven methods. So, which are not harming the animal's body in way. So, these can be you know. So, now we do have luckily Traditionally, we are having a strong tradition of the plant uh, plant based animal health products, so which have been developed. 
and these are being sold as a Ayurvedic veterinary medicine. So, there are pharma, herbal pharma companies, they produce lot many uh, medicines for the animal health also. So, these and, and we are having lot of uh, huge database of the ancient animal health care practices. So, these are this thing. So, these are available now database is there and it has been maintained by National Innovation Foundation also they have and then also National Dairy Development Board is having plants database of the plants, plant based medicines and the National Dairy Development Board in a big way through dairy cooperative is promoting herbal medicines in dairy industry. So, that can be, but we need extensive and intensive research on alternative medicines. It is very important when we say allopathic medicines are highly restricted on the organic systems. So, we have to look for the what are the alternative mechanisms to control diseases. So, there it requires a lot of research, lot of validation. So, how it can be validated? So, we have to find out from the different diseases what are the plant based products which are available in the market and what we can feed to animals in order to minimize the animal health problems and also we have to look all already the from the database of national dairy development uh, board on the ayurvedic veterinary medicine and there are some different agencies now having now diploma courses on ayurvedic veterinary medicine they are trying to start it and then lot of training programs are being organized on herbal ayurvedic veterinary medicines which a farmer interested in any other stakeholder is uh, interested in they can get in themselves informed about these thing and they can also browse the database of animal health uh, uh, this plant based animal health products so now substitute finding substitute to antibiotic is very important if antibiotics are restricted so when we say that we are saying no to antibiotics then we have to find out so to, to say yes to which particular product which can provide effective substitute to antibiotics or allopathic body medicine. For example, in this picture if you look in, so this some kind of a animal, uh, the plant based product has been applied on the udder of animal. So, if this is applied, so now it has to be seen how much effective this particular plant based product is there this lotion is uh, how much effective this paste which has been made from certain plant leaves how much effective it is there whether it works whether it does not work then we have to test it we have to validate it. So, all the farmers practices through the kind of a very big mega project if these products were validated by the project by the Indian Council of Agriculture Research. So, almost 20 years back that was a, that was this and the huge database was also that uh, many farmers practices were collected, they were documented and they were experimentally tested whether they are efficacious or not. Because if a product is not efficacious, apply suggesting farmers to go for it, it is not good. Again, because it will not help the reduction of the problem and the problem may aggravate for the want of the good practice. So, now many farmers local practices, they are experimentally being validated there is one institution by name national innovation foundation in in uh, ahmedabad it is the department of science and technology institution which is all the which have been farmers practices from the from nationwide which have been collected and which are documented which are maintained in the database they are being tried trusted and then once it is validated then these these are then only these are recommended for the use by the farmers. Now, many of the product tested by the NIF and validated by this thing, they are commercialized for multiplication by the, uh, by the pharma companies. They are buying it and then uh, the patents remain with the, these uh, they were certified the farmers who has given that basic information. So, that is a very good mechanism and now fortunately many, info, uh, many agencies are involved in this kind of validation work. So, now there are a contract research mechanism is there. Suppose you find that a particular plant product is helpful in particular a kind of a some kind of a health problem in animals or even human beings, there is now incubation facility to test that one. So, whether it is really helpful or not. So, likewise that is the first step then when we collect information from the farmers in the way in the very far flung areas in the mountainous region when the farmers when the when the people do not have uh, access to market and they when they do not have access to Ayurvedic medicine medical stores, they try at their own level certain plant based product. Some uh, they, they devise some system wherein they treat themselves and also they apply some plant based product to animals. Now, that sometime it works very well, 
may be we do not know that sometimes some kind of a treat, very effective treatment can be available by such local practices of the farmers from the very different areas. So, this has already been documented under several projects by the Indian Council of Agriculture Research and also Indian Council of Medical Research or maybe at uh, uh, NIF National Innovation Foundation. So, many agencies are documenting at different level also through student research. Many times student research in veterinary science and medical science, they are working on pharmacology departments. So, they are pharma and then pharma companies, they are, they, they are testing on many plant based product and sometime in case of uh, allopathic drugs, we take active ingredients take out, but in case of herbal medicine, whole the plant part is consumed. So, now that if it is effective, we have to see that where is, where we can have more effective treatment and though whether it is available through plant based, if it is available from the plant based product, we can, we can go for that one. If it is not there and Ayurvedic veterinary, veterinary medicine is not effective enough, then only we should resort to the, uh, the allopathic medicines. And again, I have told you in case we are going for allopathic medicines, allopathic veterinary medicine or human medicine, then we have to see in case of this one treatment of animals, we have to follow the withdrawal periods. So, if you are not withdrawing for this is not as per the government uh, as per the requirement of the farmers. So, again, so we have to be in our own on farm, we have to see that and also it would be a good practice alongside crops, we should grow some medicinal plants. So, that we our dependent, dependence on the market is reduced. So, if you are producing from the uh, uh, on our, our own farm for our own consumption as well as the consumption of our animals, it will be a good practice. So, in a part of the land in a farm, we can grow medicinal product. We can take guidance from the many institutions, many healthcare institutions or maybe this, those which are the drug companies and also maybe kind of a uh, agriculture research institutions or medicinal and aromatic plant institutions. They have lot of literature available with them, lot of and they also supply plant materials to grow uh, the, the plants medicinal plants. So, it will be good practice that if you are having a kind of a herbal garden, Krishi Vigyan Kendra also promoting herbal garden, so in their premises. Likewise that we can have several medicinal plant, so we can grow plants for the our uh, own treat, our own treatment and also the treatment of animals. So, now I, I want to again uh, go back, first of all keep the breed at your uh, farm which is well adapted to the local conditions local environment, local feed resource regime and then it should be sustained well. So, that if you have chosen a species to be here, say some species, I will give that kind of example. If you are keeping some kind of animal which are used to mountain situation where snow fall is there and all this uh, temperate condition, if you try to raise that animal and the plain condition, desert condition and where there is more dry land and more heat is, heat and humidity is, heat and humidity is there. So, that animal will not perform well, it will be vulnerable to disease. That is why very important that we have to take best caution that we are keeping the breed and species only what which thrives well under the local condition, what that we call it should be well adapted to the local condition. So, after we have taken the uh, taken care of the species and breeds in selecting while selecting, then we have to leave, we have to take care that it should be kept well. Kept well means we should feed it well as per its requirement. So, if it requires certain amount of green fodder, certain dry fodder, it requires some kind of a kind of a uh, like a balanced ration and the ration. So, we have to take care that we have to feed it as per the requirement of the animal. If you are not feeding as per the requirement of the animal, animal will suffer, it is likely to suffer, suffer from several disease or animal health problem. If the, if we are not feeding well, there is a health care issue and then we have to then resort for the medicines. We should take best care so that we do not need animal treatment, treatment with the, we, should, we are not requiring animal treatment, we should take care. So, then housing is also very important. As I told previously, we have to provide them good care of the ventilated air aid and then the sometime we lose housing system is very good wherein animals are kept in a open and they can move around and there is no crowding issue and then because of that they are in less stressful situation. We should see that these animals are not 
kept in the under space pollution. And then also we should see that animal of the same species should be kept together, mixed of species should not be kept as far as possible of the same age group animals should be kept together and some kind of a herd animal are there, they live in groups. Say for example, in case of pig, swine and all, they should be kept in together. So, they feel comfortable with their companion animals though if they are there. So, when they are there, the same, so same species is kept together and there is no crowding, that housing system is very good and that keeps away the stress from the animal. Less stressed animal will suffer less from the diseases. So, and then less uh, expenditure on animal treatment. So, this is, this is uh, as I told about the breeding. So, breed, breed should be so proper breed, well adapted to local condition, it should be fed well, it should be kept well and it should be uh, and the housing should be welfare oriented. We should see that it does not have any, uh, so welfare is not compromised. So, sometimes standard says that in case of uh, dairy animals and the bovines, what we call the cows, they should be at least have opportunity to graze for 4 hours. That uh, condition is kept so that they can move around, they can have that freedom of movement because it if and then also in case of animals, tethering is not allowed, tethering means but tying with the, some kind of a rope. Under this uh, system it is restricted, so if you are tying it up then animal will be, will have some kind of a stress. So, and uh, then so, it is not uh, recommended under organic system. So, we have to see that we have to provide as far as possible open housing. Uh, where the, there should be some shelter, it is not the necessary that it should be a very pakka house, concrete house and all that time. In organic system, loose housing system, in open air it is preferred. So, it gives less stress to animal that is good for them and but, but in case of rain or in case of human heat and all these things, there should be shelter. So, for that housing is required, it should be provided. So, once we have done all this preventive and uh, these steps have been taken, so what we believe that the health issues will be very less in animals. So, if this we have provided, if at all after uh, keeping all these kind of a situation in mind and we have taken every care to prevent disease, uh, diseases in animals and we have taken all costs and we have taken care. So, if disease happens, then we have to see the doctor, veterinary doctor, veterinarians. So, this uh, on the prescription of veterinarian, he will examine the animal and he will see whether it require kind of a allopathic medicine or antibiotics to be given. So, he will decide and he will also write the prescription that will go in the record book, it will be recorded to subject which is subject to the inspection by the certification body and the auditing agencies which will look into the record and you will see that it has been justified and then only they will verify that production as the product as uh, certified product. You know that I will again emphasize that our certification of the organic product is a process claim, not a product claim. So, you cannot say that suppose a organic milk is kept in one glass and a conventional milk in one glass and anybody will after looking at it and or by testing it, it somebody will say it is organic or not organic, that is not the case. It is a process certification, process is verified. The whether uh, the certification agency will see that the step in every step as per the recommended practice under organic management has been followed or not, that will be seen and that will be verified. So, for that reason record is very important and then what kind of record is required, parent record, the animals record, this is a breeding record, it is a feeding record, it is a animal health care record. So, all record right from the tagging of the animal, animal has should be having a registration number, it should have be having an identification number. So, it looks very complicated initially, but these are the very important requirement to be complied by the organic producer. If he has not complied with these records, these kind of a requirements which are prescribed under organic management, so the product does not qualify to be called as organic. You can not sell that product in the market as certified organic product. So, for that reason it is very important and then as I told that even after following all preventive measures, if animals suffer, you cannot say that I will not give any allopathic treatment. 
So, allopathic treatment has to be given. So, by animal when it is required, if it is injury is there, animal is in the pain, you cannot say that I am organic farmer, I will not use allopathic medicine because it is restricted. No, it is not true. Yes, it is restricted, but there is a condition you for the animal welfare reason you have to give allopathic treatment or the painkillers to the animals for to minimize the pain because animals should not suffer just for the satisfaction of the organic production we cannot allow animal to suffer from pain so it has to be given but only thing is that we have to maintain the record in the register why allopathic treatment why the painkillers were given it should be got so why the antibiotics were given in case antibiotics were given what caution was taken that was the caution is that you have to withdraw the animal till the time you are giving antibiotic treatment and also after the withdrawal period for how many days you have to withdraw each antibiotic has its withdrawal period written on this some has 7 days some have 4 days some have 24 hours so for that particular period you have to withdraw this animal from the organic production system. So, after the withdrawal period again you can sell the product coming from that animal which has been given antibiotic treatment you can sell that product as organic product. So, that is that is very important. So, the in, in case of and then a vaccination sometimes people say that they have that fallacy that vaccinations are not allowed in the organic system. Again I am saying vaccinations are allowed and these are very important it has to be given if a disease is endemic it happens routinely in that particular area it is endemic there so on the prescription of the veterinarian and also when it is a legal requirement in any country that vaccination has to be given in case of india right now i am saying that foot and mouth disease is very important disease which government is having a very big program on control of food and mouth disease for that nation wise food and vaccination food food and food and mouth disease vaccination program is going on so we cannot say that we will not vaccinate our animal against food and mouth disease no it has to be given so the but and as a preventive measure in case of antibiotics it should not be given as a routine measure it is exceptional case when it should be given certain standard in some countries uh, antibiotic treatment are strictly restricted they are not given so but if your animal time and again suffering from a disease which require continuous and the regular antibiotic treatment if you are giving for more than two times then you have per, you have to permanently remove this animal from the organic production system. So, two times only antibiotic treatment is allowed in case of dairy, dairy animals or others wherever antibiotic treatment is given you can give antibiotic treatment only twice in a year. So, if you need it for third time then you have to take away from the uh, uh, organic production system you can keep it in the conventional milk production system that particular animal. So, now uh, coming to the plant based uh, material which are available at the level of farmers. So, that can if these are effective then it should be given then on the, the on the plant based material so many uh, pharma companies herbal pharma companies they have uh, produced uh, medicines herbal medicine for uh, animals also these can be purchased on the prescription of again veterinarian that and it should be recorded which particular medicine has been given and where from it was purchased, it is a manufacture date, it is expiry date, everything should be noted down and for how many days it was given that record should be maintained. And then also those interested organic dairy farmer, they should browse the huge database available on organic medicines or her, uh, herbal medicines, Ayurvedic medicines which are prescribed for animals. So, under what condition these are given that database give big information about that one. So, that can that can be if it is publicly available any source and there are certain magazine which on regular basis uh, there is one magazine honeybee by produced by uh, Shasti network from Ahmedabad. They are having a huge database of uh, herbal medicines and plant based healthcare products which can be given to animals and after then and then it should be properly validated it should be seen sometime it may so happen any plant based products it does not mean that it is all safe to be given to animals it should not be given rampantly it should be properly seen if there is any side effect of it and then it it it, it has any adverse long term uh, uh, adverse effect on animal health it should be seen it should be properly validated that is why government is having several schemes and there are some institutions which are testing these uh, these herbal products suppose 
if some area, some farmers, uh, some pro, uh, some product is some plant, some plant leaves are very effective on certain kind of animals. So, if companies or some kind of research institutions are coming to know about these product, they are inviting them, and also sometimes they are sharing. And then, then later on, if it is found uh, effective, then they are uh, fi filing for the patents, and they are also say, say, sharing the all the income which is earned from this patent and all this kind of thing with the uh, innovator who has reported this particular plant product. So, that these are some of the good practices which should be followed up. So, in case of animal production, it is organic animal husbandry, it is not that it is altogether different uh, in a that sense. It follows all the rules, regulation related to conventional organic production as far as animal welfare is concerned. So, it is not that we are having separate standard, they are over and above the standard the requirements of the conventional organic uh, conventional production. So, animal production has certain good animal production practices, they need to be followed over and above these animal practices, they are certain guidelines are there, which are very specific to organic production, organic animal husbandry. So, these we have to take note of, we have to read all the document and organic animal husbandry is highly skill oriented. It is not that very casual thing, especially you know Indian farmers generally they do not maintain good record in general. Their memory is very good, they can tell you that last year on which date they did sowing of wheat crop or when the transplant of rice they did it, but they, they have traditionally they are good memories about the date of sowing and everything, but in organic animal husbandry or organic farming maintaining the record return way is a, is a must one cannot avoid that unless you are having record maintained about the animal and all the healthcare practices you have followed and all kind of medicine whatever you have given. So, it is very in, uh, important to maintain the record because then the once you are organic farmer, organic uh, animal husbandry producer, animal livestock producer, then the certification agency you will be having, uh, you will be client of that certification agency, they will come to inspect your farm or audit agency will come to inspect your farm, they will see. So, if you have followed and they will see your record only, they will not ask you verbally what you did, they will look into the record. So, they will see the animals record, animal health care record and they will see animal feeding record. So, animal breeding record and animal health care record. So, you have to very record many kind of many time organic producer fail on this count and they are they, they are at default and they, they say that they have not compliant. So, the, this must they are not compliant to the organic standard, this particular standard has not been followed up properly. So, they are not, uh, then they are not given the certificate and they cannot market their product as organic, organic product. So, now one good thing is uh, happening now, grower group is coming up and the many pharma producer companies and the uh, pharma producer organizations are coming up. So, when at that time, so then the, in the group, the you can, they can collect good information about how to go organic. Individual farmer, it is very difficult at time to maintain all these kind of things. When the grower groups come up, so it is a good condition that if you are an organized group of farmers, then the information can be better, you can get good, uh, you can get in touch with the sources of information from where you can get that information. And now many training institutions are there. So, many they will, they will, they will, they can train you and they can tell you and uh, they can build up your capacity how to go for organic farming, how to go for animal husbandry. You can be in touch with these agencies and you can, you can read the package of practices of various animal production on, uh, production and how processing and done and then many, many organization now are supporting the farmers. So, you, you can as if you are a farmer wishing to convert to organic animal husbandry or organic farming. So, you have to see that you get in touch with the institution where from you can get right information. So, many training institutions are now there which can impart training on or you can request customized training also. For that you can because it is a very skill oriented uh, work going into organic farming it is, is not so simple switching over from conventional to uh, organic production system, you need to have certain skills, you need to have lot of information, lot of knowledge and then you have to see what can be fed, which cannot be fed. There are so restricted list of items, which cannot be fed under organic animal husbandry. So, which there are some restricted list and then what is allowed, 
what is not allowed there is a list you have to follow the list you have to be compliant to the list you cannot uh, violate the guidelines of the organic animal husbandry practices you have to look into then i would suggest that you have to go through again then you you visit apida website agriculture process agriculture and process product export development authority so you can you can look into and you can visit the section on national program on organic production that then also under that you visit that section wherein the standards and guidelines of organic production are given you read these guidelines properly you try to follow up once at, at your own level then you seek guidance from the training institutions institutions which are recognized for training on organic farming including organic animal husbandry get their help and then also be in touch with the certification agency which can give you practical guidelines how to convert to this one and how to uh, maintain your record if you are in touch with some certification agency then you look for their records what kind of record they are asking and what to be maintained how it should be maintained and then again how to provide health care very important it is and then how to then you have to be in the uh, take regular advice from the veterinarian how to prevent diseases so because in case of conventional sometime we just don't visit professional healthcare professionals so then uh, the, the, so that is that is that is not uh, good situation in case of organic production you have to be in touch with the qualified uh, animal healthcare provider so that uh, that will give you a proper advice that is very important to take help when required from the qualified animal health care provider sometime people go visit quacks you know those who don't have knowledge they give at random something that may be injurious and that may that is not allowed on the organic system you have to take advice from the qualified animal health provider so that is very important then uh, all the plant based product as i told in you as whatever you if you have seen then it is very helpful also it report to the proper authorities or the research institution who can tell you that yes there is no harm in feeding it it is good and they can also further work on that and then they can develop into ayurvedic veterinary medicine and that can be used for the many more farmers so knowledge should not be restricted to limited area with the limited people it is it should be shared widely so suppose if a plant based product is helping in some part it should be shared by them in 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 ancient time people would not they were sometime they are resting it to their certain community level and all these thing now in the modern age now we have to bring this knowledge and then so it it should be the part of the no modern knowledge and we can develop many drugs or medicines based on the local practices of the farmers fortunately now we have institutions many institutions which are developing so drugs based on the information part, uh, uh, possessed by the farmers or the livestock keepers and the pastoralists they have been traditionally treating their animals through the local uh, local practices or local plant materials so that knowledge can be further uh, uh, developed for the wider use of the farmers in the much wider area i would emphasize here more about the farmers local practices many indigenous communities pastoralists they have they possess lot of knowledge about the animal treatment that knowledge remains with them unless it is shared with wider community through uh, documentation and publication and developing that knowledge into many medicinal products so there are fortunately some institutions like national innovation foundation which which is documents regularly the farmers practices and that then then the products are made after proper validation that product is validated uh, that effective it is can be so that many more people can benefit from the, this local knowledge possessed by the indigenous communities so we have to also be careful about that wherever whenever we are going coming across many indigenous communities we should try to document their knowledge so that that knowledge can be taken to the maybe maybe to pharma companies maybe research institutions maybe uh, agencies like national innovation foundation where the, the proper treatment can be given to that knowledge by developing the products so nif has developed several animal health care products especially in, to control and to prevent or to manage disease like mastitis in animal so then and also dewormer so so then how to control parasite external and internal parasites so these has these products have basically come from the knowledge possessed by the local farmers indigenous communities they have shared that knowledge and with the, these institutions and all the basis of that knowledge the products have been developed 
and then it is benefiting many more uh, animal producers and all the farmers it is helping. Suppose in earlier days when it was restricted to the, these communities only, only limited people were benefited but now that, that knowledge being shared, so more uh, we should make uh, more efforts to document such knowledge from the remote areas and that, uh, that work should continue. Go, go on because it is uh, still we are having a huge lot of information available with the communities. But sometimes they do not share it, that is not a good practice, they should come forward and now the benefits are also available by sharing such knowledge the, because when the products are developed and the benefits and when, the, when the, after it is the product is commercialized, that benefit is also being shared with the communities which share that knowledge. So, if in case of organic animal husband it is very important, the farmers local practices are standard validated and promoted further so that our uh, need for the allopathic drugs, antibiotics and all can be substantially reduced and our organic animal husbandry become sustainable practice by using the farmers local wisdom. So, this indigenous technical, indigenous technical knowledge is very important to be validated and recommended for use by the organic farmers and so that we should work. So, at the last I thank you all for uh, patiently listening this one and then we, we hope this information which I gave you is helpful to you in your uh, day to day and then it will help you switch over to organic products. Thank you.